Hey everybody, welcome to Bethel Backstage. I'm joined here with uh, our, our, our preacher today, Pastor Dan Jacobson, and yep. uh, also with Mark Colton, who is uh, our campus pastor at our Cedar Lake campus. And we're here to chew on this sermon that we just got done uh, hearing from Pastor Dan. Um, so Dan, thanks so much for, uh, for delivering it. I know that these uh, passages where it's like, machine gun staccato type it's they're not the easiest to preach and nope. i got the alliteration did that take a while to get all all the c's uh there? it's in my blood so no i actually had to work to get it out of there but i couldn't so i had to stick with the c's yeah so okay. yeah well not everybody has that gift so yeah. that's that was remarkable the, the other comment i would make is that i actually ha i was concerned for your safety at one point in the sermon because when they when they brought that balloon bouquet out, I mean, you're not the heaviest guy on staff. We were staff. hoping that I'd lift a little bit. I thought maybe bit. you were just going to yeah, go yeah. to heaven. We, uh, you know, have the ascension yeah. reenacted right there, yeah, yeah. but it didn't happen. It's thankfully. a tall ceiling, and I could have gotten a little far. But uh, uh, I told the Strasburgs who helped us out, who who made them for us. I said, "Hey, I want to lift off the ground. Give me enough balloons that I can lift off the ground." And that's what they came up with. So, I'm still here, so we're good. Yeah. Well, it was almost a scene from Up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Great movie. We'll get to Disney here in a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, we're here to talk about the truth of the sermon and the truth of the text. So you were in Romans 12, verses 9 through 13, um, a passage that, uh, as you pointed out, flows out of this, you know, this chapter 12 pivot in Romans from doctrine to uh, the application of doctrine in everyday life. And, yep. you know, in some ways, this is probably as practical as Romans 12 has thus far uh, gotten. And you have all of these, you know, little admonitions about what, what uh, love looks like. So I, I thought maybe one thing just to start with, you know, we live in a day where people, um, when it comes to love, there's sort of the, the, the Disney-ifying of, of love and sentimental love. Uh, how do you think this passage counterbalances that what do you think Dan? yeah it well there's nothing about having warm feelings or you know what i was taught in elementary school called like like warm fuzzies that idea of just like do things that'll help other people feel good mm -hmm. christian love has absolutely nothing to do with feeling i wouldn't say it that strongly I, i'd say it's not primarily about the feeling it's about the commitment and the and the unity and so we have as members of one body is verse verse four of Romans 12, we are members of one body. And then verse nine brings us to say, here's how the body works together. And I gotta imagine there are some people in Rome that Paul's writing to that don't prefer to be around each other. And so what this does is it says, hey, it's not based upon how you feel about the person. The call to love someone is the call to act in kindness and to demonstrate the gospel, regardless of whether or not you even prefer hanging out with that person. And so I think it really sets us uh, against sentimentality and says, no, 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 love, that love is actually gonna love at all times, no matter what. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a real big difference. Yeah, and we know the troubles that were going on in Rome were the, you know, primarily, apparently, between the, 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 the Jews and the Gentiles and sort of the cultural religious clashes within the, the church. But we're going to find out a little bit later in chapter 14 that uh, it came down to even basic lifestyle choices that yeah. they were viewing as measures of spirituality. And um, so, uh, Mark, you listened to the whole sermon. I saw you sitting there in the front row. Mark actually delivered the balloons. Had to be very... Uh you yeah, know, very incognito about that. Was that okay? I felt weird asking you to deliver the balloons. I was great I, with yeah, it, and okay, I just tried to get really yeah. low and yeah. <laughs> had a dab, and it worked out. <laughs> so, Mark, just some uh, some takeaways that you had. Uh, here yeah, in well, I mean, I I uh, kind of off of what Dan said. I've I've discovered this myself. Love is not led by feelings, and and I I've always said about the church. It's it's uh, where else would you get those people together for any other reason? Um, and you know, different. Uh, opinions, different political persuasions, all kinds of stuff. So I found I have to serve when I don't feel like it. Uh, sometimes with people that I, I don't really feel like serving. But what I've discovered is that when I obey like that and I follow what God wants, uh, a lot of times my feelings follow and then I start to actually feel a sense of uh, love towards them. And I think that's the way God designed it, to choose to serve um, and to, um, 
then allow your feelings to come along. I don't think the world wants to see Christians that are emotionless, that just do what we're supposed to do with yeah, robotically, great. but I think we can't be led by our emotions because uh, we won't ever do probably anything. We won't serve in the church, we won't all that kind of stuff. So, You see the verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Mm-hmm. You know, that's certainly not a disaffected, cold posture towards people. It's very much more of a... Uh, tenderness and uh, a, a genuine, a genuine uh, care. Yeah, I, I look at my my boys who are uh, ages five and three now, and I didn't grow up with any brothers, and it's cool to see them being brothers. Brotherly affection is kinetic, right? It is this like, um, you know, it's a it's a it's a fight sometimes. It's it's a, a jab here, a jab there. It it is. Uh, it, it's not just a passive thing. There's this active give and take that's going on in brother, brotherly love. And I was watching my boys this week. It's reminded me of how much our church needs to be active, right? Love that loves is not just this. We have the same last name. It's no, no. This is my brother. And there's this like this, this side hug, brotherly man hug thing that goes on, social distance today. But there's this, this participation with one another. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a huge, a huge bit of it. Yeah, for sure. You know, we were, uh, before we started our, our segment here, we were talking about how, uh, if you think about uh, in, in a kind of in civilization, uh, world civilization, how many of the um, uh, regimes and even political ideologies are trying desperately to create a society that that looks like this. Uh, and so, you know, uh, whether it be communism uh, or some other totalitarian approach that mm-hmm. basically seeks to conform people outwardly mm-hmm. to, you know, be sharing and you know, communally living life together, and it never works. Never uh, works. It never right. works. But we look in the gospel and we look in Romans 12 here and we see really what our our hearts are longing for and we see that God creates it not outwardly conforming us but inwardly, Romans 12, uh, to transforming us uh, by the renewing of our mind and that the the admonitions here are all byproducts of the Holy Spirit within us and the explosion of supernatural life that God has uh, given, uh, given to us. So... Uh, Dan, talk to us a little bit about um, verse, uh, let's see, verse 11. Do not be slothful in zeal. Yeah. Be I love fervent that. in spirit. Serve the Lord. I love that image, right? Because we, we know what sloths look like. <laughs> and uh, it's, a weird, it's a weird word to find in the Bible. I don't use this word ever, but if you've seen a sloth, it's the most, like I just want to like prod it along and be like, come on, a little faster, man. Like get, get going. Yeah. And um, zeal is also not one of those words that we use too often, but it's, it's about um, the, the manner in which you go about your business. Mm. And I think it's just po- poignant for us. A lot of people, a lot of Christians are waiting for opportunities for love to cross their paths. And they're just like these sloths that are just on the side looking for an opera. And Paul's like, no, no, no. I've seen the way you go about business. I know the way that you want to, like, get going. The time is now. Mm. Um, and so there's this, this, this activeness, again, this, 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 this proactive nature for us to be um, not slothful in our zeal, not going about our business of our souls with carelessness or haphazardly, but being intentional mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. it. And, and seeing that if you're, I think they build upon one another in verse 11. I think if you, if you are not slothful in zeal, the counter to that is that you're fervent in spirit, is that you are bubbling up in your joy and your delight. There's this, you know, boiling water doesn't need to try. The, wa- the heat from the, wa- uh, the, the source underneath the boil is actually causing the activity. It is in the right position to be fervent. And mm-hmm. when we're in, the, in that position of loving one another, the spirit's gonna bubble up in us, just love for more of the spirit. And that's gonna terminate in serving the Lord. Mm-hmm. When we see whatever act of love I do, whether it's making a phone call or um, visiting someone or, or um, taking care of a need, uh, whenever that happens, we have that spirit bubbling up in us, that fervency of it. And, uh, and don't you think too that the connection between be fervent spirit and serve the Lord, I, I've thought of this verse uh, many, for many years about how those um, feed each other, that um, as I serve the Lord, it, you know, you almost put a buy in there, be fervent in spirit by serving the Lord. Right. Or, uh, you know, the other way, that as I serve the Lord, there's a, uh, an enthusiasm 
really. That's kind of what he's talking about, is an yeah. enthusiasm about about what I'm doing and in my relationships with others. And Mark, you, you've been in ministry a long time. Any observation that you would make about uh, that relationship between uh, serving the Lord and enthusiasm? Well, it, kind of going back to what you were saying before, it has to come from within us. I mean, uh, you can't force people to serve in the church. You can't force people to love well. But when God does something inside of us, um, it it does. It bubbles up. And... Um, and only God can do that. It's, it's been neat to see people. I've actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about, we have some people in our congregation that have pent up uh, fervency of spirit. They yeah. want to do something. They, yeah. They've been sitting around at home. They've been a little slothful because they've been forced to be slothful. Um, and so they're like, how can I serve? What, what can I do? Where can I use my gifts? And so uh, just seeing people find little ways to bless the community to... Um, I love that. I love seeing it. it it's coming from within. We're not, we're not making them do it right now. Um, it's coming from a heart that wants to serve. Yeah, but, uh, and yeah. now is not the time to be slothful, yeah. right? Now is a time for action. Yeah. Now is a time for us as Christians to put, you know, we use the phrase, put, put your money where your mouth is, mm-hmm. right? Why does the world think that we're hypocrites? Is because we say a lot of things, but don't back it up with action. And so now is a time for us to maybe reimagine how we can love one another. You know, the situation we're in is very limited. And so we gotta think about ways to use our spiritual gifts, to kind of call back to last week's sermon, the way that we use our gifts in the church is different today because we've got so many different parameters for how we relate to each other. In the same way, the way we love others and serve the Lord is gonna look differently today. And I think that's okay. We need to give ourselves permission to get going. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, and, and these verses are a powerful apologetic for, for uh, Christianity. Yeah. Oh, they're you huge. Know, it's, uh, it's been said you don't, uh, no, rarely, I'd say rarely, is anybody one to Christianity or to Christ with an argument. Right. But when when they see this sort of communal care and love, there's a there's a, a part of being an image bearer. It's, we, we're drawn to it, and I would say it's because all the things we love about this we find in God. Yeah. You know, He is He His love is genuine. He hates evil. You know, He holds fast to what is good. You go right down that list, and every one of these are qualities that we find um, in God and. And we, you know, it's, it's why we long for him. Yeah. And uh, it's another aspect of, of uh, who he is. So, Dan, I'll give you the last word here. Uh, I, I wrote down the word magnanimous. Love <laughs> is magnanimous. Uh, I'll give you the last word on, on, on this subject. Yeah, I, I guess that was the, the thought I had going with just putting a gaggle of balloons up on stage. Like the, the, the magnanimous nature of love. How do you represent that? And um, for me, it's just the whimsical nature of, of something that everybody loves, which is, you know, for, for mm-hmm. Americans, you little kids, balloons. And I think love has such a, a potent power. We look at the history, we look at the Roman Empire. What brought down the Roman Empire? It wasn't rebellious Christians, it was loving Christians. Um, what has the power to change the civilization that we live in today? It's when Christians take the love they've received from God and they put it to work in loving each other that's how people see who God is. And they see our magnanimous God mm-hmm. in our, use your word, magnanimous love for one another. So mm-hmm. yeah, let's go be about it. Yeah, let's, do, let's do that. Bethel Church, uh, those, are, those are great words for us and uh, we're gonna do our best to love and lead well in that direction. Thanks for joining us for Bethel Backstage. Hope to see you next Sunday.